Eugene Malero with Transport Topics, and joining us today in the studio is Steve Morrison. He is Director of Business Development at Siemens Rail Systems. Steve, thanks for coming on the show. My pleasure, Eugene. Glad to be here. Thank you. Uh, there's a lot of talk inside the Beltway about infrastructure, how you uh, manage to get an infrastructure funding plan. Do you link that together with tax reform? Uh, the indication from the Trump White House is that we should expect something in May. That's what Secretary of Transportation Elaine Chao suggested. On Capitol Hill, the Republican leaders are awaiting for directions from the, from the White House. Uh, so we're playing the waiting game right now. Uh, you know this, what everybody's talking about is how do we you know, pay for it. Just let me ask you, what would you like to see in a uh, infrastructure funding bill? Well, you're right, Eugene. Everybody is waiting for it, especially those of us who are in the business of delivering these projects. Um, I think for, for our company and for my colleagues who work in all aspects of this, whether it's power, uh, whether it's in rail, uh, whether it's in you know, modern um, freight transportation over the road, um, we clearly understand that there's just a lot to be done. And the state of the infrastructure now in the United States is reaching the point of failure, whether you're talking about bridges or tunnels, uh, whether you're talking about transit. Um, it's a public safety issue. It's an economic uh, um, revitalization issue. It's a quality of life issue. So for all those reasons, you're right. Folks are very, very interested to see what the president's going to propose and, and what Congress ends up deciding to do. I think what we're looking for primarily from the administration and from Congress is just a reasonable, um, consistent, uh, dependable federal commitment over multiple years that will allow important projects, particularly state of good repair projects in all of these areas to go forward with some degree of confidence that funding will be sustained, the commitment to deliver the projects will be sustained, and therefore those of us in the private sector can step up and participate in the appropriate way to make sure that these projects are successfully delivered. There's um, the, the topic about how we get to this sustainable long-term system to keep projects funded. Uh, one way that the states are going about this, and I can think of Indiana and Oklahoma, uh, is raising the gas tax. So two states are considering to doing that this year. Uh, on Capitol Hill, there's, you know, industry is pushing lawmakers toward that direction, but there's pushback. Is, there, is raising the gas tax at the federal level something that you think should be viable? And, and also, if you take a step back, what would be some funding options? Well, the federal gas tax right now is 18.4 cents a gallon. And it hasn't been increased, I believe, since the 1990s, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, yep. Um, conversely, the range of state gas taxes right now are as low as about 12 and a quarter cents in Alaska and over 50 cents uh, a gallon in Pennsylvania. There's a wide range. Um, you know, I think most people would feel that um, a gas tax is certainly an appropriate place to look to generate revenue for specific dedicated transportation project improvements. Um, it's essentially a user fee. Uh, but having said that, clearly it has a disproportionate impact on certain industries, certain businesses, um, certain families. So it's not an easy decision. What we would like to see is simply with all of the tools available to it that the federal government find a way uh, by looking at its budget to see how it can, you know, appropriately at the right level fund projects that need to get done. Uh, clearly the states are stepping up. Um, since 2013, 18 states have raised their that, gas tax. About, yeah. Another 18 are looking at it right now. Um, so they're clearly, you know, prepared to do their share. Uh, and there's an appropriate federal share. I think most folks realize it. Um, there's certain political philosophies that are against it. Um, you know, conservative Republicans um, have been against it continuously, which is why it hasn't been raised in, I guess, over 20 years. 
but uh, the time is, is now to look at it because the cost of not doing anything is, is really not, uh, not acceptable. A, uh, we have a, a vision and a blueprint that give us an idea of what the Trump administration would like to see when it comes to transportation in their so-called fiscal 2018 skinny budget. Um, that budget, um, you know, eliminated funding for these infrastructure tiger grants and also reduced funding for transit systems. Mm -hmm. What was the reaction to this uh, budget blueprint? Well, I think the general reaction in Washington is that it's a starting point and it's not going to be the end point on most of those fronts. Um, that budget proposes eliminating the capital investment grant program, which um, delivers the most studied, um, ready to go uh, transit projects in the country, projects that have continuously proven in hindsight to be successful once they're built. They, they have you know, full engineering, um, complete funding, all the environmental permitting done. So we think that would be a mistake. Uh, it proposes, as the Heritage Foundation has, has proposed for many years, to eliminate Amtrak. We disagree with that. I work with Amtrak every day, and they're making improvements every day. Um, what needs to happen is to use that as a conversation starter Republicans as well as Democrats have clearly indicated that uh, that's not how the budget that's formulated on the Hill will end up, and I hope the administration will work with Congress to, you know, find common ground. Um, as we, um, you know, lo look ahead in mid-May, is we're going to have our annual Infrastructure Week, mm -hmm. and uh, your firm has been a participant uh, of that event. Um, can you talk about you know why people should pay attention this year to Infrastructure Week, and also uh, what your hope to you know bring to the table this year? Well, this year, more than any other year, it's a, it's an important issue or set of issues that face not just Congress and the administration, but frankly, state legislatures and local governments all around the country. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that the infrastructure that we built over the last century, which was completely world-class, second to none, like anything else over time, needs to be maintained. And funding has been limited for so long that the maintenance of our critical infrastructure, roads, bridges, tunnels, uh, our power grid, our ports, um, our, our transit systems, our passenger rail, all of it is failing. Uh, the cost of doing nothing makes the cost of fixing it more and more every year. Again, we raise the possibility of catastrophic failure, whether it be a bridge or a tunnel um, or you know, rail that causes injury or death. And it's unacceptable to continue to allow that risk to occur. And it's unacceptable to believe that y there is no choice but to kick the can down the road. Um, that's why the gas tax uh, measures that are happening right now around the states are so interesting. Because in the states that have passed it, both Republican and Democratic lawmakers who voted for it have been overwhelmingly reelected. Uh, there's always been a big fear here in Washington that vote for raising the gas tax would mean I'm going to lose my next election. And so far, uh, when you look at what's happening in legislatures all around the country, in red states as well as blue states, there's no evidence of it. What matters is determining projects that clearly make sense, that people use every single day. And that's why infrastructure this week it, this week in the middle of May is going to be so important because um, we're going to be trying to draw as much attention as possible to the real problems that the country faces right now. Uh, not just talking about programs, but actual issues or, or you know, uh, things that need to be fixed and to draw attention to it that affect people's day-to-day -day lives every single day. And a perfect example, you know, when is that, you know, look at the transit systems. Look at, you know, what American Society of Civil Engineers graded the transit systems writ large, a D minus. That's right. Uh, and then also, 
you know, Amtrak, Amtrak, the Northeast Corridor could be, they, they will argue that it's because of funding that, um, you know, they, they, they run at the speeds that they do. Well, that's right. I mean, there's a lot that, that the United States can do to uh, improve its passenger rail system and um, not only bring it up to a level that we experience in other parts of the world where we work, or you know, it live and we're a global company, but also for the sake of Americans and uh, the need to move more people further uh, efficiently. Uh, one of the big challenges we have today is folks are forced to uh, live further away from their jobs because the cost of, of living in a large metropolitan area, whether it's San Francisco or Washington or New York or um, even a large city in the Midwest is, is becoming prohibitive. So folks have to live further away so they can afford a house and whatnot, and they end up spending more time commuting. Uh, it's a real problem, and it's degrading quality of life. So uh, we feel very strongly that there's, a, there's an across-the-board case to be made for the investment. Um, the risk of um, political retribution is overblown. There's a way for Democrats and Republicans to come together on, on infrastructure investment. Um, and there is a need to make that investment now. So transit systems like WMATA here in Washington, as a perfect example, that have been forced to you know, put off uh, necessary maintenance for, because of budget constraints are no longer forced to do so. That's right. Steve, let's leave it there and check out ttnews.com for the latest freight news and uh, Infrastructure Week, May 15th through the 19th. Thank you.